Yes, Roma wines taste better because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Kirk Douglas in Community Property, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining, for delightful dining. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant. As Roma Wines bring you Kirk Douglas, the young American actor who has just made such an auspicious screen debut in The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Mr. Douglas appears as George Mason, with Kathy Lewis as his wife Lois, in Community Property. Tonight's tale of... Suspense! You sure manage to look sloppy in the mornings, don't you? Thanks. Coffee? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have qualified it. You look sloppy most of the times nowadays. Why should I waste my time looking glamorous for you? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just your husband. I just pay the bills, that's all I do. What bills? I should look like one of the ten best women of the year and what I can squeeze out of you, I suppose. I'm not talking about clothes. But you could get your hair out of your face and put on a little lipstick for a change. Sure. Get up three hours early and go to the beauty parlor. All for the privilege of making your breakfast and listening to your sour cracks. What's the matter with you? Didn't you sleep well? What do you care? I thought maybe you'd been lying awake nights again, wondering how you're going to spend your share of Uncle Bert's 50,000 bucks. I never lie awake nights wondering how to spend any money that you ever got your hands on first. Well, you got something there. I've got better use for that money than letting it go into freak hats and imitation furs. Well, then stop harping on it. I don't care about the money. I don't want to see the money. I don't want to hear about the money. <laughs> what do you call this? Coffee? That's what it says on the can. Yeah. You can even make stuff out of a can taste rod. If you don't like it, go get your breakfast at Schwab's Drugstore. It's no pleasure for me. Well, I would if I could afford it. You know, you're not kidding me any, Lois. Kidding you? I've stopped even trying to communicate with you. That doesn't prevent you from trying to make my life as miserable as possible, though, does it? Your life. What kind of a life do you think I've had this past year? I can't even remember the last time I had a, a civil conversation with you. As for anything else, I'm nothing more than a housekeeper around here, a housekeeper that doesn't get paid. Yeah, it's tough. Sometimes I wonder how you stand it. So do I. But I know why, all right. Oh, you know everything. I told you you weren't kidding me any. As long as you think I'm going to get that inheritance from Uncle Bert, you'll stick to me like a leech, won't you? I told you I don't care about the money. I don't want to hear about the money. I ain't enough about it. Even if your uncle is fool enough to leave it to you, which I doubt. Oh, sure, you don't care about the money. Not much. All I care about is having a decent life. And I've about come to the conclusion it's impossible for you to be decent to anybody. Well, if it's as bad as all that, why don't you get a divorce? Well, maybe I should. Maybe it's time we talk divorce, George. Maybe it's just high time. Well, what's stopping you? Sometimes I wonder. I don't. You'll never get a divorce as long as you think I might inherit 50,000 bucks. That's what you think. Well, I've thought about it. I've thought about it plenty. Then why don't you do something about it? Because I know you're too cheap to pay alimony and the lawyer's fees. That's why. <laughs> Is that honestly all that's worrying you? Oh, I'm certainly not worried by any illusions I might ever have had about you. All right. I'll pay the lawyer's fees in advance. And any reasonable alimony, you can get a judge to grant you. Do you mean that, George? I never met anything more in my life. Brother, you've got yourself a divorce. <laughs> I tried to register shock and righteous indignation, but I could hardly keep my face straight. Lois was going to get a divorce. I'd been working on it for a year, ever since I'd realized that Uncle Bert was going to die and I was going to inherit his estate. Ever since I'd realized that under the community property laws of California, Lois would get half of it. Half of 50,000 bucks, I figured. Maybe even more. 50,000 bucks. I wasn't going to share that with Lois or anybody else. For a year, I'd been nagging her and insulting her and even knocking her around a little, but it was no use. He just turned sullen and took it. And so I'd just about given up thinking about divorce. I'd begun to think about something else for Lois. I'd begun to think about murder. <laughs> For 
Your suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Kirk Douglas in Community Property. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. To enrich your quiet evenings at home, to add warmth to your welcome when friends drop in, serve Roma Wine. Yes, your family and friends will appreciate and enjoy the important difference in Roma. The extra goodness in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. That better taste of Roma wine begins with California's choicest grapes. Then, with ancient skill and America's finest wine-making resources, Roma master vintners guide this grape treasure, unhurriedly, to tempting taste perfection. These choice wines are placed with mellow Roma wines of years before. And from these reserves, the world's greatest reserves of fine wines, Roma later selects for your pleasure. So for everyday enjoyment or gracious hospitality, serve Roma California Sherry, Port, or Muscatel. You'll find all Roma wines delightful, moderate, inexpensive, and always better tasting. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Kirk Douglas as George Mason and Kathy Lewis as his wife Lois in Community Property, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. So now Lois is going to give me a divorce at last. And Uncle Bert's $50,000 would be mine, as long as she started proceedings before I inherited. And knowing Lois, I figure now that she'd finally decided she'd probably go to work on it that very afternoon. When I drove out to Uncle Bert's later in the day, I was feeling like a kid just out of school. It was one of my regular visits, and I never missed. Three or four times a week. And that was a born a pain. But I'm a guy that can put up with $50,000 worth of almost anything. Good afternoon, Mr. Mason. Hi, Judson. How's the old boy feeling this afternoon? Oh, not too well, I'm afraid, sir. Oh, gee, I'm sorry to hear that. One of his bad days, eh? It's rather, rather difficult, yes, sir. Well, uh, do you suppose it's all right for me to see him? No, yes, sir. It's nothing that serious, I should say. Oh. He's called for his lawyer, Mr. Bernard, and for Dr. Thorpe. So oh. I should imagine he'd be quite able to see you as well. Yes, yes what is it? <clears throat> Your nephew, Mr. Mason, is here to see you, sir. Oh, sure, man. Hello, Uncle Bert. How are you feeling? Uh, not well, my boy. Not at all well. Well, go on, Judson. Close the door. Go on about your business. Yes, sir. Judson was saying you had sort of a bad day. Yes, I'm completely bedridden now, as you see. I'm afraid the end's not very far off, my boy. Oh, don't be silly, Uncle Bert. Why, well, you'll live to be a hundred. Oh, no, no, no. I'll call Dr. Thorpe. Oh, you can't scare me. You call Dr. Thorpe every other day. I tell you, I'm sick. I'm dying. Are you going to sit there and argue with me? Oh, I know, Uncle Bert, but, gee, I, I hadn't realized it was that serious. Oh, it's most serious. <coughs> I'm glad you came today. <coughs> I'd have called you if you hadn't. Oh, I understand your uh, your lawyer is coming over. Yes, yes. I wish to be absolutely certain that my affairs are all in order before the end. Gee, Uncle Bert, well, it's hard to believe that anything could happen well, like that, I mean. Ah, oh, my boy. There's no disputing the Grim Reaper when your time comes. I'll pull your chair up a little closer. With you. That's it. <coughs> now, George, you've always been a good nephew to me. Of course, I, I know you were always thinking of the money. Well, that's only oh, natural. Uncle Bert, I don't care. I, uh, well, that, that's not fair, Uncle Bert. You're a liar, George. But you're a good liar. And that's a comfort to an old man. Because I don't know what you're like in daily life. I've been ill so long. <laughs> well, just the average, I guess. Uh, I wouldn't think so. I imagine you're mean and greedy and... Thoroughly dishonest when it's safe to be so, as I was. It runs in the family, so that's only natural, too. Wow, you make me sound like a pretty bad guy, Uncle Bert. Oh, no, no. That's only true to human nature, George, with a little 
dash of Mason family fell on him. Yeah, you've always been a good nephew to me, George, even though you may have been a hypocrite about it. Uh, and that's all anyone has a right to expect at my age. Well, you won't have any reason to regret it. Well, I, I wish you wouldn't talk that way, Uncle Bert. I... Oh, what way? Well, uh, how about the, the money and things like that? <laughs> uh, I don't want to hear about it. Have I ever asked you about it? I... No, no, you haven't, George. You've been very clever about that. Ooh. But you might as well know now. Well, uh... As my will stands now, my estate will be divided into two parts. Oh. Yes. One half of my estate will go as an endowment to my old school, Weymouth College. Half? Yes. Uh, oh, who's that? <coughs> Come in. Hello, Mr. Mason. How are we today? Oh, hmm? uh, doctor. The old man's handing out bad news today. Now, in your case... I'm afraid you're about to lose a steady source of income, Doctor. Oh, uh, meaning... Meaning uh, me, yes. I'm afraid you're going to have to find some other victim to pay your office rent very soon now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know my nephew, of course. Don't you? Oh, sure. Uh, hi, Doc. Hello, George. Oh, 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 by the way, George, here. Here's a prescription your wife asked me to write out for her. Oh. You might have it filled on your way home if you have the time. Sure, thanks. Yes, bad news all around. Now, George here, I just informed him that I'm leaving half my money to my old school. <laughs> he looks mighty disappointed, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, Uncle Bert, it's, well, it's your money. Why should I be sorry? Mm -hmm. Now the uh, false, Mr. Mason. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, I haven't told him all of it yet. Uh, Want to hear the rest, George? Whatever you say, Uncle Bert. Really, Mr. Mason, you shouldn't be talking too much. Your condition's not as good as it might be uh, today. Oh, yes, I know that, I know that. As I was saying, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes, the will. As a matter of fact, I, I'm leaving you fairly well provided for, George. Enough to give you a little start in life anyway. Now, take it easy, Uncle Bert. It's you I care about, not the money. Uh, 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 you're an accomplished liar, George. Well, That's the only word for it. But you can relax again. The other half is going to you. Well, you know, you didn't have to do that, Uncle Bert. Well, not that I don't appreciate it, but... Uh, yes, uh, I think it will help a little, George. You'll be able to use $500,000, won't you? What'd you say? <laughs> really, Mr. Mason, really, I must forbid oh, you to get keep excited. Keep quiet, keep quiet. Uh, didn't you hear me, George? I said... Uh, Uncle Bert. Mr. Mason. Uh, Uncle Bert. Uncle Bert, listen to me. Listen to me. Tell me. What you, what you said. For Uncle... heaven's sake, man, have a little decency, can't you? He's dead. He can't be. It's some kind of a gag. Did you hear that? Five hundred thousand dollars. Mr. Bernard is here to sit. Oh, oh, I'm afraid you're too late, Bernie. Bernie, you drew up the will. You know. Oh, hello, George. Bernie, he said five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Oh, you mean your inheritance? That's roughly what it comes to. Half a million bucks? And permit me to be the first to congratulate you, George, on bearing up so well under your bereavement. Half a million bucks. And he never told me. Why, the rotten old liar. I left the house in a daze. I got in my car and started driving. Just driving around. I don't know where I drove to. I just drove, and I must have spent that $500,000 500,000 different ways. But I wasn't in such a fog that I didn't do a little real thinking, too, about Lois. Because now if she got her divorce, she'd nick me for half of that money anyway. And I wasn't having any of that. Not after what I'd been through. So it would have to be the other way. So I'd have to talk her out of the divorce, or it would look too much like a motive. But first, I wanted to be absolutely sure of everything. I spotted a corner drugstore. It was late by this time, but I had Bernie's home number, so it didn't matter. Then, on the way past the drug counter, I remembered the prescription Doc Thorpe had given me. I think I had the idea right then. Yes, sir? Uh, how long will it take you to fill this? That? Oh, that won't take any time. Okay. Uh, where's your phone? Uh, just to your left, sir. Thanks. Hello? 
Uh, Bernie? Yeah. Uh, George Mason. Why, hello, George. I, I'm afraid you can't have the money tonight, old boy. But mm. Come in first thing tomorrow. Great kidder, aren't you? Listen, Bernie, I wanted to ask you something. Anything you ask will be charged against you from now on, George. No, seriously, though, I met a friend of mine today, a, a Texas oil man, but he married out here, and he's, well, he's having a little trouble with his wife. Send him uh, around. I'll, I'll give him a discount. Well, maybe I'll do that, but all he wants now is free advice. So he's worried about this community property law. Well, it seems he came into quite a hunk of dough out here lately and... Oh, coincidence uh, department, huh? Well, not exactly. This was, a, well, a deal of real estate, you know. Oh. Well, he wants to know if there's any way he can keep his wife from cutting in on it. Oh, a heel, huh? That's right. Not a chance, my boy. Any property accumulated in the normal course of affairs after the marriage is community property. That's the law. Yeah, that's what he was afraid well, of. Well, listen, though, George. You want to know something cute? Mm. Not, nothing to do with your friend, of course. Well, I got to go, but... Bernie. I'm late. I I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, but I'm trying to tell you well, something. Well, save it till tomorrow. Good night, Bernie. I was in no mood to listen to bright sayings. I had too much else to do. At the drug counter, I picked up the prescription. It was what I thought it was. Sedative, it said. She'd been taking stuff to make her sleep for quite a while now. At the next counter, I bought her the biggest box of candy I could find. Then I went home to kill her. Lois? Is that you, George? Uh, yeah, you going to bed? Yes, I have. You're late. Well, I, I wanted to tell you about it. You don't need to. It's nothing unusual. Well, I, I know it isn't, Lois. And, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, Here's something I picked up for you. What's this for? Nothing. I, well, I just thought you might like it. You must have wrecked the car or something. <laughs> no, but, well, I, I've been doing a lot of thinking today, Lois. So have I. You, you haven't done anything about that yet, have you? I mean the divorce. Not yet. I know you're in a big hurry, but tomorrow will be time enough, won't it? Now, listen, Lois. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of thinking today. Well, it was... It was quite a shock when you said that this morning. When I said it? When, when it came up that way, I got to thinking, I've been pretty rotten to you these last few months. I don't know why, but I have and I know it. Well, you haven't been exactly the ideal companion, George. It's as though something was driving me, making me do things and say things that I didn't mean and I didn't want to, and I couldn't help myself. And, oh, I don't know what it's been. Worry, trying to scrape along with everything going sky high and running into debt and... Well, thinking about the old man's money, I don't know what it's been, but I know it's been awful. For me, too. And I know it's been ten times as bad for you. Oh, I know, George, but everybody has those kinds of worries nowadays. Well, I know, and you don't take it out on somebody else the way I have. But, no. Well, when you talked about divorce, well, you know, it, it made me realize that... I love you, Lois. I don't know how I could ever get along without you. Do you really mean that, George? I never meant anything more in my life. Just give me another chance, Lois. I'll do anything. I'll go to a psychiatrist or something. I know it's been my fault, but I can change. If you'll help me, I can change overnight. It'll be the way it used to be, huh? Oh, George. Oh, darling. I, I know I've been a terrible heel, but... Oh, oh. no. I, I know it, it wasn't really you. It hasn't been all your fault oh, either. I've been sullen and nasty, but I had to do something. Just in self-defense, just to keep him going crazy. Because I loved you so much. Oh, there, there, baby. It's going to be different now. I've learned my lesson. I know it will. I know it will if we try, George. If we both just try. We used to be so happy. We're going to be happy again, too. You see, happier than ever. I know it. There. <laughs> you know, I did think I'll really sleep tonight for the first time in months. Good. I've been so nervous lately. I've just been a wreck. Oh, say, that reminds me. I ran into Doc Thorpe today, and he gave me a prescription of yours. I had it filled on the way home. Here. Huh? Oh, my sleeping pills. <laughs> That's funny, you're thinking about that now. I probably won't need them anymore. Well, you better take one anyway, huh? Just to be on the safe side. Say, maybe I'll take one, too. Gee, it's been a pretty tough day. Yeah. All right. I guess tonight maybe I'm almost too happy to sleep, George. Would you warm up a little milk for me, darling? Huh? To take them with you. Sure, honey. I'll fix you right up. Thanks, darling. I went downstairs and started warming the milk. I'd had the stuff hidden away for a couple of months now. It was a narcotic that would have the same effects as the sleeping pills and show up the same way in an autopsy. I put some sugar and cinnamon in the milk to cover the taste and then dumped in enough of the stuff to kill a horse. Then I took it up to her. Oh, thanks, darling. 
Mm. That's nice. What'd you put in it? Oh, just sweeten it up a little. <laughs> sweet, still sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's your pill. Oh, thanks. Mm. It tastes a little funny. It's nice, but it tastes funny. Oh, see, maybe I got the milk a little too hot, huh? Tastes funny when it gets spoiled. Oh, yeah, maybe. Now, drink it all now. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a good girl. Uh, there. That's the ticket. Feeling sleepy? Yeah, all of a sudden. Well, now, you lie down and let me tuck you in and you get a good sleep. <laughs> and tomorrow, we'll start all over again. Uh, a new life. That's right. Tomorrow, there'll be a brand new life. I took the glass downstairs and washed it out thoroughly and brought it back again, half empty. I dumped about three quarters of the sleeping pills down the drain and then tipped the bottle over on the bedside table to give things that reckless look and went to bed. You think that's pretty funny, I suppose? Lying down in the next bed to someone you know is dying? We'll be dead before morning. Someone you just murdered. Well, maybe it is. But all I was thinking of was that 500,000 bucks and spending it over and over another million different ways as I went off to sleep. And believe it or not, I slept like a baby. I woke up early feeling great, not knowing why for a minute. And then I remembered. I went over to look at Lois. She was lying just the way I'd left her. I put out my hand and touched her arm. That was all I needed to know. She was cold. Stone cold. Dr. Thorpe's office. Give me the doctor. Quick, quick. Who's calling for you? What's the... George Mason, hurry, please. Hello, George. What's the trouble? You got to come right over here, Doc. Something's happened. Something terrible. What is it, George? Lois, those pills you gave her. She's taken almost all of them. I can't get her to move. She... Wait a minute, she... George. Wait a minute. Are you sure there isn't some mistake? I know there isn't. She's... She's cold. You'd better call the police, George. Uh, police? Yes. Yes, it's usual in such cases. I'll be over, but you'd better call the police. Yeah. About half an hour they arrived. Two plain clothes dicks and a man from the coroner's office. He and one of the dicks went in to look at Lois. And the other one stayed outside talking to me. I know it's a trying time for you, Mr. Mason. I can't understand it. I can't understand it. Have you and your it. wife had any uh, quarrels? Well, no. Oh, well, we had our little spats, but nothing more than any other married couple. Why, nothing to make her do a thing like this. Mm-hmm. Has she been taking these uh, sedatives long? Well, the last few months, I, I don't know exactly why she... Well, she'd been nervous and upset. You know, she wasn't getting any younger, of course. But she took them on the advice of a physician. She was under a physician's care, I suppose. Oh, yes, Dr. Alexander Thorpe. Well, he saw her regularly, but... Well, he never told me there was anything mental. I... Mm -hmm. I... How about it, Doc? Uh, Narcotic poisoning. Pretty clear. That body was full when that bottle was full. When she went to work on it, she took enough to kill her, all right. And I got it filled for only last night. Well, I guess that's about all, Mr. Mason. We'll... I'm uh, Dr. Thorpe, the family physician. Oh, hello, John. Hello, Alex. You know Lieutenant Farley? How do you do, Lieutenant? Yeah, hello, hello, Doc. Hello, George. I want to see the, uh... I take it Mrs. Mason is dead? Uh-huh. Narcotic poisoning. Your prescription, wasn't it, Alex? Yes. Yes, so it was, but, uh, I'm afraid there's some discrepancy here. Discrepancy? Yes. I had been prescribing sedatives for Mrs. Mason for some time... Lately, however, I reached the conclusion that her uh, mental health was such that uh, the possession of drugs in any quantity would be dangerous. My last prescription, therefore, contained no sedative of any kind. Huh? What did it contain? Nothing. Sugar and a neutral base. What? If Mrs. Mason died poisoning, the poison was administered to her in some other form. You said administered? I did. From the evidence, I can reach no other conclusion. Neither can I. Well, Mr. Mason? Can I call my lawyer? You're entitled to do that. From where I sit, bud, looks like you're going to need a good one.
Well, let that be a lesson to you, George. Before you commit a murder, always check with your attorney. Great kidder, huh, Bernie? Sure. If you'd only told me this on the phone yesterday, instead of that cock and bull story about a friend from Texas, I could have saved you a lot of trouble. Yeah, how? I tried to tell you. Money that you earn or make in business is community property. Money that you inherit is not. That 500 grand would have been all yours, John. You see what I mean? (laughs) Next time, check with your attorney. Check with your attorney. A great kidder. Now he says, don't worry. If you can get me out of the gas chamber, I'll still have the worst years of my life ahead of me. How do you like that? Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Roma. America's favorite wines. This is Truman Bradley bringing back for a curtain call our suspense star of the evening, Kirk Douglas. Kirk, millions of our suspense listeners will remember you as Barbara Stanwyck's husband in The Strange Love of Martha Ivers. Seeing you play the part of a weak, neurotic man, uh, they'd never guess you were a wrestling champion in college. Well, you know, Truman, the difference really isn't as great as you might think. No? You see, college wrestling was my first acting experience. Mm -hmm. Why, that's where I learned to portray suffering. (laughs) (laughs) Well, since you were undefeated champion, Kirk, I imagine most of the suffering was done by your opponents. (laughs) But uh, you must have some other hobby besides wrestling, Kirk. After all, you can't be throwing your guests around the living room all the time. Well, my wife claims my favorite hobby is eating. You know, I do have an awful sweet tooth. When it comes to eating cake, I'm worse than a ten-year-old at a birthday party. (laughs) Well, speaking of birthday parties, Kirk, reminds me that your host of the evening, Roma Wines, has a gift for you. This hamper of Roma Wines with the compliments of Roma, the greatest name in wine. Well, thank you, Truman, and my compliments to Roma. And for that sweet tooth of yours, Kirk, let me suggest this. After dinner tomorrow or with dessert, enjoy the tempting taste luxury of Roma California Port. Yes, brilliant, ruby red Roma Port with its rich, full body and mellow, natural sweetness, is the ideal finishing touch to a fine dinner. And when friends drop in, add warmth to their welcome with Roma Port. You'll find Roma Port delightful with your favorite fruit or nuts, too. Truman, I'll remember that. Thank you, Kirk. And remember that in all Roma wines, you enjoy an important difference, an extra goodness in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. Yes, Roma wines taste better... Because Roma selects better tasting wines from the world's greatest reserves. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. I can't think of a better recommendation. Thank you and good night. Kirk Douglas appeared through the courtesy of Hal Wallace Productions and can soon be seen in the RKO picture, Out of the Past. Tonight's suspense play was written by Robert Richards from a story by Howard Leeds and Arthur Julian. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Mr. Lloyd Nolan as star of Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as Richard Conte, Ava Gardner, Robert Mitchum, David Niven, Virginia Bruce, and others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Stay tuned for the thrilling adventures of the FBI in peace and war, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.